Cool. I think we want to continue a bit of discussion that we um, we had in the testing micro conference and also include the a more in depth uh, part with the all the regression tracking work that Torsten is doing and uh, and invite everyone to to participate in these discussions on on regression. So first thing is like we will do maybe ten minutes or exciting context and then. Uh, get people to 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 join and and part and participate into the discussions so yeah first thing is regressions are hard like so we we know that and uh we've been trying to to work with that like for for quite some time um i think we can move slides torsten and the thing that we want is to see from from you uh what things can we do to improve beyond just like being frustrated because i know from our experience that uh, many of the maintainers are become like quite frustrated with uh, genome regressions over like the past few decades. And uh, we want to keep improving on the process that we've been building like across the community. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we switched for him. So yeah, we switched. Yeah, we asked for that because of Torsten, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, we just had to do a switch because of the AV setup for Carson to join us. Yeah. Yeah, it was a last minute switch. Sorry about that. <laughs> and um, yeah, pretty much we want to do uh, a discussion on which things can, we can improve beyond um, just like uh, getting yourself frustrated with the, with the different processes across. I'll hand over to Thorsten to go through some text bot updates and uh, and then we, we keep keep moving. Yeah, thanks, Gustavo. Sorry for not being around, uh, uh, but I hope this will work as well. Let me give you a quick recap of uh, my regression tracking efforts. I'm doing this regression tracking for the kind of for two years now. I'm doing it with Rexbot, a small regression tracking bot I wrote. <clears throat> And let me show you how it works by using a, a regression report from Jiri uh, that he posted in that message ID. Um, yeah, he posted it to a, a Linux mailing list and uh, I saw that and added it to, to the tracking by uh, replying to the mail and including a, a Rexbot command, this Rexbot introduced, which you can see uh, near the bottom of the screen. And then, yeah, then Rexbot uh, actually notices this mail and starts tracking the thread. Uh, he, Re, Jiri could have used that command himself to to uh, add the regression to the tracking, yeah. But once uh, Rexbot uh, tracks the issue, it looks basically for replies, and as long as there are replies, I think uh, I, I consider the, the discussion ongoing and uh, nothing too much to worry about. Yeah, and uh, what Rexpot also does, or what's the key thing, is actually it looks out for other messages that refer to the re re reported regression. It, uh, among others, does that by looking at link and closes tags in patch submission, submissions that uh, link back to the regression report, like in this case where you can see the uh, report at the bottom. Yeah, and... Uh, uh, actually, when there are replies to that patch submission, Rexbot notices as well. And once uh, uh, the patch uh, lands in uh, next, it considers the, the uh, patch or the fix incoming. And uh, once the uh, patch lands in, um, in uh, mainline from as much by line as then it considers the regression resolved, basically automatically. So it works somewhat similar, similar with Baxilla kernel.org links and arbitrary links as well up to a point. Um, yeah, but that's how I keep an eye on track regression. And, uh, uh, and like in this case, I didn't have to get involved much at all because everything stayed active, uh, but I will show up with question if things look stalled. So how how do I keep a, uh, uh, an eye on things? Yeah, Rexbot has a web UI or a dashboard where it lists the track regressions actually with some details with the recent activities it saw and messages uh, elsewhere. I don't go in much into this detail uh, here because yeah, we want to discuss things here. And I use this da data to actually compile a weekly report that gets sent to with the regression that is sent to uh, Linux, who actually reads this and uh, reacts to it. And uh, developers can interact with Rexbot themselves. We have Rexbot commands like the one I just showed. Uh, for example, when a link closes, talk was forgotten. But in the end, they don't have to care about Rexbot at all. 
and they don't even have to track uh, uh, have to care about my regression tracking work either, unless of course looks uh, things look stalled or a regression is not handled appropriately, then because that's uh, when I show up. So in the ideal case, adding the report to the tracking is just the only extra work required because the link and closes tag uh, are, are old thing that's already there and uh, not everybody sets that, but but uh, it's, uh, it, like I said, it sh they should be there and uh, then Rexport can use it. Uh, Rexport itself is pretty uh, basic, sometimes a bit rough, but it's what it's uh, but it does what it's designed for. A few features uh, I'm working on in, in the little bit of time I'm, I'm, I've, I find to time uh, time to work on on the Rexport code itself is uh, one of the things is support for issues submitted to GitHub and GitLab projects like the CLang project uh, CLang Linux uh, people uh, track issues there. Or the free desktop people track issues there. Uh, I'm working on that, but will, that will likely take another month to get ready. I also wanted to uh, separate actionable and non-actionable reports in the UI, so to make sure that everything that's not bisected or somewhat crazy is not uh, messing up the UI, so to make sure the regression that can be worked on are in a focus. And um, yeah, that that are some of the features of, I'm, uh, I'm I'll plan to move, work on soon. Later, uh, there are a few other things uh, that require some cleanups first. Uh, among them is, for example, uh, subsystem specific web pages for reports to make sure Rexport itself is more useful for subsystem maintainers. And in the long term, maybe even look at pull requests sent to Linux and uh, give an update there or check if, if there's anything in the pull request that is known to cause a regression. Yeah, that's of the state of things right now. Basically, in, in as I said, in a nat natural, which brings uh, brings us to what uh, do you want Rexbox or me to do with regression tracking? The one thing I uh, often heard is that some people want to add regression through to the tracking uh, that CI systems found. I'm totally open for that. I think that's useful. It's definitely something that should happen. Um, but the problem is uh, I need to be able to stay on top of, of the track regression, otherwise get, things get messy, it's, it just becomes another bug tracker nobody looks at. Yeah, and uh, so this, this definitely needs separation between actionable and non-actionable reports. And maybe for CI reports only, those be should become actionable if some human performed a sanity check, which I also do for, for, for all the... All the uh, 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 reports that get added to Rexbot, I basically look at them and check if, if they are sane. Yeah, that was actually my part. Um, yeah, and I think now Ricardo wants to sum up this uh, session we did on on uh, on uh, Monday. Yeah. Yeah, or well, maybe before before moving on, uh, if anyone has any questions about uh, Thorsten uh, part about Rexbot. We can leave that for later. Okay. I have one. I have one question, real quick. Um, so, does Regsbot uh, send a closes, uh, like an email with a closes tag, if no one else does, or? Uh, as I said, if things are stalled, uh, um, then I will notice it, and I will briefly look into the issue, and then I'll send a message that, uh, that uh, to the thread where, with the report, basically telling Rexport and also the world that the closest tag, um, uh, which uh, uh, um, commit fixes the issue. And um, it could also send mails uh, uh, to the list if uh, 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 a commit with a closest tag uh, hits mainline, for example, or, or next to make sure people stay in the loop there. Uh, but right now it doesn't do that. But right now Rexbot doesn't send uh, mails on its own uh, because I don't want to get people uh, annoyed by Rexbot uh, and mails it sends. That's why I'm pretty careful there for now. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Okay. Maybe one, one point is like, um, what do we need for Hexbot to start like sending uh, automated uh, emails like from the things that you are tracking? Uh, I mean, code to basically send mails, but wh when do you want to make Rexbot send mails? Do you want to to uh, report, uh, to, uh, to add a uh, uh, reply to every report once a fix lands, or w w what do you have in mind? That, that could be one, 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 one way, yeah. Like I'm, I'm thinking more of a, how it, it 
walks to become like a more system that runs by itself with human interventions I mean, as needed. Yeah. That basically just needs code, like uh, sending mails and deciding when to send mails. For example, after how many time uh, days of uh, uh, when a um, situation looks stalled, uh, send a mail, for example. That's uh, quite possible. But I mean, once Rexbot starts doing this, people will, will become annoyed by it. And that's why I'm uh, want, wanting to make sure Rexbot itself works pretty well and uh, is a bit uh, more polished than it is now. That's why I'm yeah, my question, a bit my question goes in, Yeah, my question goes yeah. in, in, along those lines, how to, not people, how to not make people annoyed by it if we start like automating more steps of that process? That's like a, one of the questions we are trying to answer. Looks like Guillaume has a question. Yeah, hello. <clears throat> thanks. Um, it's kind of related. Um, I'd like to bring up the um, the fact that uh, kernel CI is acting as a central place for uh, all test results. Like you know, people can submit their results, and as a side effect, uh, that's also that can also act as a central place for tracking regressions. So in in my mind, Rexbot was more like a way for people to report regressions by hand or via emails, um, and then that could be one of the sources of uh, regression information that gets stored in a uh, central database yeah. of kernel CI. How the, do you the, see that? The bit, uh, yes. The, the big difference is that I care about all regressions and not only about regressions uh, reported by CI systems. Yes. So I also care about users reporting a regression. Yeah, that's that's ex ex bit. actually my focus because I knew CI systems were working. On, on a lot of stuff so already. So I kept uh, kept a bit away from that. Yeah, so that's exactly what, what I mean. It's a way to extend the type of regression data that's being, that could be sent to, uh, to kernel CI. If all the regressions tracked by Rexbot were forwarded to kernel CI, that would add on top of the ones already reported by the CI systems. Do you, do you see what I mean here? Yeah, I see what you mean. The question is, what, what, uh, what, uh, uh, um, what's, what's the best way? Do CI reports go to Rexport or, or the other way around? Uh, that's basically, I guess, something we need to discuss. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, because in my mind, it, like you know, some CI systems generate some some tests, generate some regression data. And Rigsbot is a way to do this by end. Like people will be working on patches and you know, reply to well, send some emails and uh, report some regressions manually. So to me, it was like on the same level as CI systems, you have you know, developers who do this by end. Um, if we wanted CI systems, like I mentioned, to send data to Rigsbot, uh, I think that would duplicate the work that CI is aiming to do. So I, I didn't I get your last five seconds. There was a sub alarm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If you get CI systems to send regressions to Rexbot, um, and to me, it seems like this is duplicating what kernel CI is trying to do. Because kernel CI is not like a random CI system. It's designed to be a central database for storing data from other CI systems. It's not specific. It's not like a linear system or an Intel system. Or, uh, you know, it's trying to be the database for centralizing information like this. Um, so if you if you, if you have all regressions both in kernel CI and in Rexbot, sorry this <laughs> another siren. Um, it's it, I don't know, it seems like trying to maintain two sets of data in sync, which is never gonna work. So but but how could kernel CI actually uh, maintain reports that come from a users? And ensure they, they are. Well, Rexbot does that. Uh, Already, Rexbot pauses the emails, so yeah. it has the data, so Rexbot can forward these, this information to kernel CI like other CI systems do. That could work, yeah. We basically would need to think about that, yeah. What, what direction is the better one there, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, I think the other thing is going to be complicated or by causing problems. But, okay. I think the other feature of Hexbot that's uh, that's important here is the actual tracking of the lifetime of the regression. That's one of the the interesting things that uh, that I see at least on the Hexbot Hexbot process that we we found regression may come from user, may come from CI, 
but there is a process there to to follow up through and 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 figure out when the regression speaks into. and that's kind of becoming uh, a bit of a standard for, for some of the the regressions we've been finding from users yeah i think it will also be part of what kernel ci should be doing as part of the user stories for the user experience so if Rexbot can already track when the regression has been fixed, it can send this type of information as well to kernel CI, even though the, that support yeah, is not quite a good yet in kernel CI, but you know, it would make yeah, sense for actually, uh, yeah. yeah. Thanks to Gustavo and Calabra, um, um, Rexbot actually exports this data as JSON these days, and it can be queried everywhere, everywhere from, from the outside. Yeah, they, they provided patches for that. So yeah, query dot directly for the yeah. Like that, ob obviously, thing. that's just code. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And may I just ask a few stupid questions to understand <laughs> the context better? I did, don't. Yeah, at least before <laughs> before this uh, talk, uh, did not have much experience with Rexbot. Do I understand it correctly that that latent operation that somebody reports an issue to the mailing list? Then you send Rexbot command to say, to tell Rexbot that this issue is happening starting from that current release. And when somebody sends a patch fix, then you send another command like this is a fix for for that. Am I correct? No, no, no Normally that's not needed if if the main uh, developer actually uses a link and closes tag that are supposed to be there. The, Main, uh, developers are supposed to to use the link and closes tag to to link to the report, and if mm -hmm. Rexbot uh, uh, tracks uh, tracks the report, mm -hmm. then it will notice this link automatically. So then I don't need to send another mail, only when it's forgotten. And the ultimate purpose is to make sure the fixes uh, reach uh, stable branches, or just to, so that so that no issues remain forgotten. The the, fixed, the, uh, just... the 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 ultimate ultimate uh, 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 thing is uh, to make sure the patch uh, patch reach uh, the tree where the regression happens. That can be next mainline or sta or stable tree. But yeah, obviously uh, the mo most important thing is to ensure that regressions get fixed. Yes, in in a mm -hmm. reasonable time, so not after months. So uh, quicker, ideally. So uh, I'm from Sysbot team, and uh, so the question is: if it, Can it be of any help if we include, I don't know, some Rexbot commands in our reports to email? Like sometimes we have, when we report an issue to the mailing list, then we, after some time, we from cause by section, so we roughly know when the issue started. And would it be of any help if we added some Rexbot commands to tell you also that okay, here is the report, and it starts from that point, or I, I think at, at some point that makes sense to have every to have those reports in in uh, those issues in the reports that go to Linux, like the those reports from Günther that sits there in front of you. As if I don't uh, get things right on the video, uh, he also uh, uh, sometimes um, reports uh, or oh, regularly reports compile errors to mailing lists, and I add those to to Rexbot's tracking and uh, help him keeping an keep an, uh, an eye on things. And that could work like that with uh, 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 bot as well, yeah. Because if it's just one line that we need to add to our email template and it will it's, make everybody happy, then... <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's just one line. Uh, but if you flood Rexbot with lots of entries and I can't stay on top of it anymore, then I will, I will become unhappy and uh, then we need to change something. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. That, that's where like uh, some of the discussions between us and Tartus started like, oh, can we part something? Mm, maybe no, maybe like if it's coming from a CI, it's like just too much data. And uh, what uh, what we've been doing as part of like a more experimental process from the collaborative side of things to, to play with the regressions is to go manually through a bunch of regressions. Okay, this one, we are going to go through Facebot and report there, this one too, this one too, but there is a human. So, so far you prefer to, yes, to, oh, to, uh only for humans to interact with Rex board after they have understood everything and make sure that there are no false positives. Maybe, like, yeah. I think the limitation, that's what I understood from Torsten as well, is like a, 
maintaining the reputation of Hexbot right. and the process of the community. If you throw a hundred issues tomorrow, that's like a... Mm, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I, I think we all don't want another bug tracker that is filled with issues nobody's working on because that's useless. So maybe it's like um, which process on your side would you would you do to select like the highest priority one and the ones that might have more likelihood to be fixed by the maintainer and then Hexbot could track that. Well, yeah, it seems like as long as you categorize it as like a you know, I assume there'd be a label on it. Maybe it's a, this is a sysbot, and you know, we know they're kind of chatty. And I, I think you had something about categorizing uh, actionable versus non-actionable. And so maybe it's not that big of a deal if you have, you know, if your inter interface hides, you know, a big stream of stuff. You're not bothering the mailing list with it, but you know, it, you still have it there. I mean, you could be delivering yeah. counts to Linus of the sysbot yeah, yeah. issue. Yeah, Tim, Tim, exactly right. The thing is uh, that I just need to code this up and, uh, uh, and to make sure that it, uh, it's handled. And uh, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm just only one guy and tracking the regression already takes a lot of time. So I don't f find that much time to work on the code at the moment. Because yeah, even if uh, not for uh, the all the issues that are reported and probably not addressed, then at least if, uh, making sure that fixes reach uh, stable trees, then maybe it could make sense to somehow integrate and at least for the issues we know are fixed because in that case we do know most cases correctly the when it started when it ended and if you're tracking where it's present i think it's a useful piece of information that could that make could sense. work yeah yeah because it would be a non-actionable issue so people wouldn't like the maintainers looking to hexbot would not see that because kind of feature out but the hexbot on the back end is tracking if your issue was fixed. Is that the case? Yeah, and that says yeah. can that so that Rexbot at least could help track that the fish fixes reach mm -hmm. other trees as well. Because at least that was um, earlier I was given a talk about this bot and we actually moving in similar direction, we're trying to find uh, issues that are fixed in LTS. Uh, that are not fixed in LTS, but for which we do have fixes in the main line that just nobody backported. So I think there is some overlap in that functionality. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. There's actually an RT stable team that um, actually does the RT backports into multiple of the stable trees. And they've got some methodologies that might make sense to look at and then see if, because those are the sorts of things that we have to do anyhow. But if you're looking at bug fixes, maybe there's things that can be learned from that. Just a thought. Any more comments? Gustavo, Ricardo, make sure your stuff also <laughs> is discussed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, there is not a lot to, not a lot left to discuss because basically what we wanted to talk about was what we didn't have time to talk about last Monday. But um, yeah, tying tying it up with what Thorsten has been talking about, about Rexbot and uh, his solutions to some of these problems and tracking regressions. Um, can you, I, th I think you still have the, can you move to the next slide? Uh, wait a moment. Yeah, here we go. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, essentially, the, the problem that, uh, well, the open issue that we still think it's there has to do with um, what we were talking about the other day, um, getting more information and extracting more information from the data that the CI systems already have. And uh, what we see is that uh, the information provided by CI systems is still kind of unidirectional. It goes to the user, but there is no information back from the users to the CI systems. And I think there, there will be value in uh, getting this uh, regression tracking information back to the CI systems and close the loop so that um, uh, CI systems can then uh, use this information to create trends, to uh, extract maybe more useful data for other reports, to keep the reports updated, hopefully uh, presentable in the form of a web dashboard 
and keeping the status all concentrated back into the data source. I think this is pretty much it. I think there's another slide. Can you, Thorsten, can, can you move to the next one? Okay. So yeah, Rex will provide these features, but uh, integrating them into the source data uh, can lead to more useful and up-to-date reports and maybe some other uh, more detailed information that we are missing right now because we don't have the, the whole um, the whole story in the same place. There is some, uh, well, on the, on the one hand, we have the, the basic reports, the basic data about the tests failing. On the other hand, we have the history of each regression as it progress. But maybe if we can put all of this together, we can figure out what we are missing now. And this is pretty much it. Um, any comments? Just a comment on that. Um, yeah, it'd be, uh, I think it'd be really useful if the data was, uh, was uh, aggregated enough that you could see trends in both user reported versus CI reported uh, bugs and then use that to drive like maybe test generation or something. I think I think that was what we were saying before. Guillaume was saying as well that uh, we can aggregate a lot of things in KCIDB, and uh, having all that data enable us to do the the train generation, and then from there, driving you know quality of the the test we test should be focusing on and so on. Yeah, just to clarify, it's not really KCIDB. But the the idea is to um, the idea with the, the new implementation of kernel CI is to do the same things that KCIDB has been doing before. Uh, but yeah, so just sometimes you know, about the namings, people get confused with what's kernel CI, what's KCIDB. I think it's important to just call it kernel CI um, because that's you know what it's aiming to do. And yes, there's um, a topic we want to work on called uh, dynamic scheduling. So instead of just having a hard coded set of tests to run all the time, um, the idea would be to look at what's going on and have some in, some dynamic input data that will tell the scheduler which tests to run. So this could be based on regression. So if one part of the code breaks off and for example, and then maybe the scheduler would be running more, more tests there. I mean, it's, you know, ideas are, are endless, but again, that's the kind of thing that would make sense. And if, with more data as an input, then the scheduler would have a clearer, a bigger, clearer idea of the bigger picture and then be able to, to do more advanced things like that. Any more comments? Sometimes we find that a bug is present from old oldest uh, LTS kernel and it is still present, but it is very difficult to reproduce that. Maybe uh, Cisport has found that. So uh, sometimes people just test it on some revision. They think that that it was not present earlier. They report it to RegZBot. So because it was a negligence sort of that they just reported to RegZBot, but originally they should not have reported that to RegZBot. So I'm kind of confused in that, that case that it is a bug which is present in the current kernel and all LTS. So should we report that to RegZBot? The thing is, uh, uh, Rexbot is is uh, mainly meant for for regressions. Uh, so if something is really an old bug at uh, or an old regression at some point, it basically becomes a, a bug. Nobody is responsible anymore, for, or anything can't be done anymore because reverting that change after half a year, after a year often is not possible anymore. Uh, so maybe you could add it to Rexbot and. Uh, but but uh, I don't know if it would make much sense or uh, change much at, uh, much at the outcome in, uh, because uh, yeah if if if, if the, the the in the really old branch that doesn't uh, happen anymore because the the one thing that also is on top of Rexport is um, that I'm poking maintainers when when things are not fixed and uh, yeah that only works if they can do something about it and uh, that sometimes it's just not impossible but but if in, if in a doubt uh, simply add it to Rexbot it can't hurt and it's just a one line in, in an email to edit. Yeah. 
Sim, you're talking about uh, uh, looking at regressions and driving test data, but uh, of course that needs like a human to do that. Um, one thing that I do is we review uh, CVEs on uh, every other week and we look at static analysis and how static analysis could uh, identify the bugs. And um, there's always something we can improve. Every week we're like, oh yeah, there's three things we could, three bugs we could have found. Like maybe uh, uh, use after free and we're, we're like, it's supposed to have been caught, you know, or um, the NTFS uh, was getting user data and we're like, okay, we can add that as a as a taint function to say that user data comes from there. Um, but we could do that with like Sysbot and say, how come Sysbot didn't detect this? Do we have the right definitions, uh, you know, the right um, Sysbot header stuff to exercise this path, et cetera? Yeah, basically, until you start mining, well, not until you start mining stuff, but uh, mining stuff should help you actually improve your test processes, right? So it's like, like you're describing, it's like, there's so many, there's so many things that can be improved. And like to my, when you actually start mining real regression reports, right, you can say, oh, well, that's a big area that, like you said, we should have caught. We don't go deep. We look, well, uh, my experience is uh, you look at the first thing you can find, right? That's the most common bug. You're always going to find the most common bug first. And so whatever you see, you just say, oh, could we could we fix that one? Why didn't we fix that one? Uh, you don't have to look deep, but you just have to look regularly. I think we're done, maybe early lunch. And since Tarsten, he fell over the bridge, I don't know, he's not here anymore. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, that's ended. <laughs> yeah, he's over, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I am going to eat healthy also. I, uh, That's what I figure. I, don't That's wanna, what I, figured I, ha I have a session after, and I, uh, yeah. of all the people in my session that can't fall asleep, one of them is me. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got, I've got the IoT session after as well, so. Do you have Philip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I still have my presentation, so I'm not that oh, free. Yeah. <laughs> I still have yours. So uh, yeah. oh, yeah. Please show up. Which time is it? 4 30. Okay. If anybody is still around, sorry, my laptop just crashed and uh, took, the, uh, took everything down. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, person. <laughs> I, I hear you. Hello. We, we are kind of finished already. Uh, people are yeah. leaving for lunch. So, sorry. Yeah. Enjoy your lunch and uh, sorry for, for uh, leaving so abruptly. Uh, it, no worries. Yeah, we figured out we had some issue there. Okay. Great. All right. Enjoy the, Thank you. Enjoy the conference. Thank you. Thanks for the session. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.